All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. In this video, we're going to talk about Terrence Crawford, Jerron Ennis, Errol Spence, and what Holly Malinaji had to say about uh, what's going on in the welterweight division. Basically saying that it is these, and I'm going to add a little bit extra to it, you know, put an extra little flavor on top of it. It is pretty much these guys avoiding uh, Jerron Ennis that is causing Jerron in that caused Jerron Ennis not to look as sharp as he should have looked and that if these guys get in the ring with him that they're going to see something completely different out of Jerron Ennis but uh, let's go through that in more detail uh in this video <laughs> All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we are going to be in the 147-pound division where Pauly, the magic man, Malinaji, had some very interesting things to say about the champions in the division and what they're doing relative to Jerron Boots Ennis. Excuse me. Sorry about that. But before we get into that, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, Please do not freeload. Hit that subscribe button and hit the icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. We're always having very good boxing conversations over here. Whether you agree with me or you do not agree with me, it is just, it's always a good conversation to be had. Unless, of course, you're very, very rude and start barking at me, at which point in time, if I read your comment, I'm either going to delete it or I'm going to delete you entirely. Because, look, man, this is nothing but good boxing conversation don't bring your personal baggage over here and throw it at me. Anyway, that said, hit that subscribe button and we will have a good boxing conversation. If you are a longtime subscriber and supporter, thank you for continually participating in the conversation because you are definitely the reason that this channel can keep going and pushing. We're growing a lot last year, um, not just in the number of um of subscribers that we have but also just in the general you know conversations the conversations that we're having in the live streams and, and in the comment sections this is very 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 enjoyable a lot of really 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 bright people in the community that really know their boxing but you know don't have their own channel so they come over here to chop it up about the sport also, thank you to everybody that supports in that super thanks that you can see in the lower right hand corner of the of the uh, screen with a heart and a dollar sign. That is a way to donate to YouTube channels and support the content they put out because, hey, man, somebody got to pay for those lights anyway. So thank you very, very much. But let's get into this. OK, so Polly Malinaji, uh, who everybody should know, Polly Malinaji uh, for I believe he's a former welterweight champion. Um, for a short period of time, uh, kind of like, in my opinion, like, you know, slightly poor man's Devin Haney, kind of a slick fighter, uh, not a lot of power, but always, you know, a good competitor for sure. Right. Um, wound up doing commentating for Showtime Sports. Bright guy knows his boxing. Right. Not everybody agrees with his politics. I don't agree with his politics. Uh, or his necessarily, you know, some of his worldviews, and I wish he would keep those to himself, and we could just talk boxing, right? And, you know, just, it's not your business, man. Stop talking about it. <laughs> but anyway, knows his boxing for sure. Recently gave an interview about the fight that took place between Jerron uh, Ennis and Kareem Kukadajev. And as you know, or you may know, that was on the undercard of the Javante Davis uh, Hector Garcia fight that took place uh, January 7th. So I think it was, was it one week ago today that that fight took place? Yeah, I think it was a week ago today. Uh, Jerron Ennis winds up chasing the guy around, wins the fight, unanimous decision, wins every round. Um, but at the same time, you know, did not look the best, I think is a fair thing to say, right? For one other reason, either the guy didn't make him look good or he wasn't prepared, whatever the case was, you know, everybody expected something and they didn't get what they expect. So people can be disappointed about it and then start doubting them. Now, uh, and that's your prerogative, you know, he's going to have more fights. So if it happened that time, okay, you know, happened one time, shame on them, happens two times, shame on you. So we'll see what happened next fight. But 
Pauli Malignaggi had an interesting uh, viewpoint on it. Was that look? Jerron Ennis should have had a world should have had a champion a shot at a world championship a long time ago. And when you're waiting around and you're waiting around and you're beating this guy and you're beating that guy, you're beating this guy, you're beating that guy, and you keep having your eyes looking towards the world championship shot that you deserve, you can get a little bit disinterested, right? And you may overlook a guy here. You may, you know, just, you know, not necessarily prepare for him the way you should. But so what he said is, look, pretty much, man, that the wit he equates to Jerron Ennis' performance is that these guys keep keep avoiding him for so long that he may have slipped a little bit, right? Now, this is not something that is um, that is unheard of. That, I do believe, is the case of what happened to Errol Spence Jr. when the same thing was going on with Errol Spence Jr. after he won uh, the IBF championship from Kell Brook. Once he won the, the belt from Kell Brook, he was still trying to get fights with Keith Thurman and, I do believe, Sean Porter. I think those were the other, yeah, those were the champions. Keith Thurman had the WBA, WBC. Uh, Keith Thurman wouldn't fight him, wouldn't let him, you know, wouldn't let him uh, unify the belts. Sean Porter wouldn't fight him. Danny Garcia wouldn't fight him, right? So he's sitting there for long periods of time looking for somebody to fight. He winds up having to take a fight with, like, with Lamont Peterson, who moved up in weight class from 140 to 147. He, so he gets that fight. But in between those fights, Errol Spence Jr. is blowing up in weight, right? And, uh, you know, because he's because before when he was fighting all the time, he fought, he went right back into camp, had another fight sitting there for him. But once he got to the point where, you know, he was, you know, the, a champion and he was looking to really solidify himself in a division and he had certain guys that he was looking for, his focus got off a little bit. So that I think that is pretty much what Pauli Malignaggi is saying about um about Jerron Ennis and what he thought. So it's pretty much, and then he's like, pretty much it's incumbent, be, and I b agree with this as well, for these champions to fight Jerron Ennis, for them to fight Virgil Ortiz. Like, I was all on board last year with the Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford fight, and, you know, everybody wanted to see that, and it was reasonable that, you know, that things kind of got held up looking for that fight, right? Uh, but while things before were not held up, because Errol had was pretty other than, you know, the fact that Errol had got injured, had been injured in the car accident and there and the retina and there was some time that he had to take off. But other than that, he was going pretty much as fast as he could to unifying the belts and fighting the champions. Right. And while he's doing that, you know, Terrence Crawford is fighting the guys that he's fighting. But, you know, after now that that fight took place, is not taking place. It is time, and I agree with Paulie 100 percent It is now time for whoever is going to have those belts at 147 to fight Jerron Ennis, to fight Virgil Ortiz, if Oscar De La Hoya is going to allow the fights, uh, uh, going to allow the fights to be to be made, so that these guys, you know, do not have to continue to fight people that are below, you know, that are significantly below them skill in a skill sense, right, or have very little chance of beating them, because that's just a natural thing to happen. You, if you just keep dealing with people that you can just beat easily then you know you may you're not going to be as sharp as you would be or or as focused as you would be if you think that you're really you know focusing in on if you really think the guy's a danger and that's something you know that's something else Errol Smith Jr. said just to, when he talked about why he doesn't like tune-ups because he feels like look man if this is just a tune-up this is a guy I just know I'm going to beat you know, I'm going to train hard, but I'm not going to train as hard as if it's somebody that I really think that, look, man, if I'm not really sharp, you know, I can get beat up or I can beat, get beat. So he actually wants to fight better competition so that he can perform better because it allows him to train better and get his mindset like that. Right. So according to Pauly, that's pretty much what he believes, you know, Jerron Ennis is, Jerron is, Ennis is going through. Right. And there, and I think that there may very well be some truth to that. But now that Errol is going to 154 to fight Keith Thurman, if the reports that are out there are true, may not be true. You never know at that, you know, in the 12th hour, uh, you know what will happen. But if that's the truth, I don't think Errol's coming back to 154. So it's on, it's on, it's on Terrence. Jerron, Virgil Ortiz, or Stanley Onis, whoever wins that, Via, if Via, you know, is the real deal after having beaten um, uh, Rashidi Ellis, right? It's up to those guys now to fight each other, man, and really, you know, increase the level of competition in, in the welterweight division, primarily for us, the fans who at the end of the day pay for the whole thing. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. 
You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace. Thank you.